Mitch Hagney. I'll tell you a little bit about him before since arriving here in San Antonio to attend Trinity, Mitch has farmed in Massachusetts, served for farmers, dude, Kentucky and Costa Rica. He's also worked for solar companies, farmers markets, and a fishery. And as a founder of a local sprout, he is now working on urban agriculture, urban farming. Give it up. A big San Antonio welcome for Mitch Hagney. Just one button, it's confusing. Okay. So we can grow food anywhere now, and it turns out that there's no real shortage of places to do it. This warehouse is one just like all sorts of other ones around the city. It used to have a pretty vibrant business, and that business went out. Nothing was going on there. A blank canvas like this can look like a lot of stuff. To us, at the time, a year ago, it looked like a farm. It arrived uh, from a company largely in Boston uh, named Freight Farms. That equipment was uh, pretty new at the time. We just bought the second one uh, in the country. Now there's 20. And installing it in August in a warehouse with no air conditioning is not something that I would highly recommend. But it turns out that the toys inside are actually pretty awesome. Hydroponics means that you don't have to grow with soil. Instead, you can just run nutrient-rich water over the roots, and the plants grow fairly well. All of our nutrients are in the back, and the water runs over the top through pumps that bring all of the water over the top, bring them exactly to the roots, giving them good light, nutrients, air circulation, exactly what plants need. And they grew. They grew really well, actually. We put out this is holy basil, something new that we just started with some of the specialty herbs, but we've done arugula, lettuce, spinach, kale, all sorts of different stuff. Uh, you had a sample earlier today, actually. Uh, One Lucky Duck was providing some of the kale that we, that we have. And these plants are really, really good. The spectrum of light that we give them is a specialized type of LED for growing plants. We don't give them much greens. It turns out the plants appear green because they don't really use it very much for photosynthesis. We just give them this kind of beautiful fuchsia color. Reds and blues are really what they need. And the spectrum of light actually means that they get specific stuff to be less rigid and better tasting. We do it in an abandoned warehouse that used to be a printing shop. Because we have an entirely enclosed system, all of the water that we use recirculates back to make sure that we waste almost nothing. We use less than 1% of the water that even an organic farm in soil would use. No pesticides, no herbicides, and we do it in the middle of the city. Now, when you're trying to decide what plants to grow, it can be tempting to just go for the most lucrative per, per pound, but it turns out that the decisions are a lot harder, actually. You have to decide how much it produces in a given time, but also how many customers might want a certain amount, because if you deliver to lots of people, it's an extra cost and makes it very hard. We discovered that building good personal relationships with specific restaurants and growing exactly what they needed, instead of deciding to grow something and then marketing it out, that's the correct way to do this. And there are a lot of places in San Antonio that really have specific needs that we can cater to as farmers. All sorts of people can do this. The other thing that we have, though, in San Antonio with a great abundance is wasted space. On the east side, a quarter of the lots are empty or abandoned. That square footage could mean 6 million tomato plants, 8 million pepper plants, or 30 million cilantro plants. And this is something that people can do all over the place. If you own a property like this, it's available to turn into either a hydroponic farm or a conventional farm, all sorts of opportunities. Now, wasted space comes in lots of different contexts. The San Antonio Food Bank actually has been growing a lot of food on their property, and they have a greenhouse that they weren't using at all. Uh, some Boy Scouts needed to construct it about four years ago. No one knew what to do with it since. We decided to turn this into an actual functioning hydroponic farm. Sam came down about four months ago, joined our team, and we've been building ever since. We decided to recycle huge amounts of pallets, about 300 just for a single side, and we saved ourselves between $1,000 and $2,000 in construction fees. These pallets were on-site available already because the San Antonio Food Bank moves so much produce, and we had the opportunity to be able to make these materials into something useful again. We run the water along the bottom of the channels. The plants come up straight towards the sun. It gets pretty hot in there. I would not recommend going in August without the air conditioning, which is what we've been doing for a little while. And the shade cloth that we installed just helps a little bit. But these plants are already growing. We put in uh, about 600 plants last week, and they are all still functioning. Now, the reason why a greenhouse might be a superior choice in our region, and this is important for anyone who needs to farm to be specific to your region, are evaporative coolers. 
Evaporative coolers like this use water to absorb the heat that comes through, that are pulled through large fans. That water takes a lot of the heat that you need and cools the entire space. At right now, this is the probably most efficient way to cool space. Now, it can be complicated to farm, but we decided to put it to the test. We decided to teach 25 to 11-year-olds how urban farming might operate. And it turns out that farming is an art. It's impossible to master, but in a short time, you really can produce something very, very worthwhile. It was awesome to see these kids approach this like a video game. Your score gets better, you can always improve, and what you, the reward that you end up with can be really outstanding. It, it turns out pretty delicious. These folks, by the end of the week, uh, it was just a single week that they, they were operating, they got to explore all these different hydroponic systems, and they actually pitched their own hydroponic farm or urban farm in space that they had access to, knowing which products they wanted, which markets they wanted to sell in, and what location they wanted to go in to try to determine how an urban farm might work for them. Now, there are all sorts of ways to produce good agriculture in cities. And one way is to understand lots of different systems in the way that they interact. These kids got to experience earthworms, they got to experience dirt in a fundamental way, and also maybe some agriculture of the future. Systems like this teach kids about surrounding environments, not just agriculture, but the entire system that is all around us. When they see an earthworm next time, they probably won't think it's so gross because it makes delicious food. Now, we're not the only people doing this. This is a farm in Singapore that utilizes very little footprint because they don't have that much space to work with, but they aren't alone at all. There are hydroponic farms on top of supermarkets, hydroponic farms and urban farms that are right outside of restaurants. People really are bringing the farm to the table. And vertical farms and urban farming in general might offer us a lot more than just produce. It can filter water, it can filter air, it can bring waste products into a space that can produce something really, really amazing. And it can do it in the middle of cities that we already know lots of people are coming to. We can make our cities sustainable again. If we make food come out of these places where we live, then really we can make our cities the place where we should be living. So I wanted to ask the question that we asked the students that we had at the end of the week. If it's true that we can grow food anywhere, what do you want to grow and where should we put it? Thank you, Mitch. Thank you Don't time. go anywhere. <laughs> Use mine. All right, there we go. Is it on? Is it on? You can use mine. On? Wait, no. Is it on? Test. All right, once again, Ken's TV provided the... Uh, no, I'm kidding. They, everything works. We just did that. It's shtick. Mitch, um, okay, this is the part of the segment uh, where I get to ask him embarrassing personal questions that you thought of but you are too scared to ask. So first of all, when I say hydroponics oh, okay, and... You know, I'm good. Okay. Urban farmers and hydroponic farmers in general owe a lot, actually, to cannabis. And the reason is because it has such a higher profit for the amount of biomass that you can produce that it's given people an incentive for a long time to build these really good technologies, whether they were like in a shipping container under the ground somewhere or they were hiding from the police in the middle of California. This technology has mostly been innovated because of these really high profit crops. And now that these things have been refined for a while, we have the opportunity to use them to make something that's not so smoky. Is, okay, is Colorado, uh, dude, you got a lot of applause for that, man. Okay, is Colorado and uh, say Washington, are they, pardon the phrase, hot houses for the, it kind of now that it's bigger there, are you finding out more about how this will work on a larger scale? Well, hot, hot houses is actually weirdly specific. Uh, greenhouses, by nature of being transparent, were not perfect choices for people growing marijuana in the past because you shouldn't really see people growing marijuana that often. It turns out now uh, people can use these greenhouses a lot more effectively. So Colorado's new innovations have helped us a lot in evaporative cooling and ways to make greenhouses a lot better. But yeah, some of the best hydroponic farmers on the planet are definitely in Colorado. Yeah. I used to work there, but you're talking much too fast to be a uh, hydroponic. Are you set up now down the road for, are you set up down the road for that to be uh, something that... Uh... All, all of our wink, wink, nudge, nudge. All of our technology would be potentially useful for this, um, but local sprout at least seems to have more of a passion in feeding people than getting them stuff. That's right, and, and that's the other thing, quickly. <laughs> The economics of this, how does it work? Yeah, that's, 
What? Is that in case the police are here in the back? Come on. Um, how does it work with local spread? You went to Trinity. I assume you could have gone to anything. Sure, what was your major, and how did, it, uh, how did you grow into this? Uh, like most farmers, I was a communications major. <laughs> Dude. Uh, and so we, we got the opportunity to start this a year ago. Um, one of the co-founders of Rackspace, actually, Pat Condon, um, a approached me and said that he'd been interested in farming for a while, and I'd been doing hydroponic farming for a bit. And he wanted a collaboration, so he put up the money. Um, Local Sprout got started a while ago. Sam Glickstein uh, joined us about four months ago, and we're growing about as fast as our plants now. Okay, and the last good question, and where is Local Sprout? How can I get uh, my plants grown there if I have some seeds that I want grown there? And, <laughs> and I don't, by the way. And, and how big do you want to grow? Uh, Local Sprout would like to provide as much produce to as many folks as humanly possible, actually. In fact, the, the produce that we actually grow in the San Antonio Food Bank, by nature of being at that location, 20% of all the, the profits that we make go directly back to the food bank. And so we would like to grow as much as possible. Your seeds, I'll talk to you after the show. No, no, no. Do you have a website where people can find out more? Yeah, localsprout.com. Our address, by the way, you also asked, is 503 Chestnut Street. Um, we are not usually there, though, because we've automated a good portion of our farm, so call first. That's awesome. Give him a hand. Mitch Hagney, thank you for putting up with my embarrassing personal questions. Dude.